lately, there have been many things that have challenged our air, right? When the police come and drag us off the aina, that is certainly a challenge to our exercise of air, right? And I should explain too that um, some people may not know what that means. You know, a lot of people have heard uamau ke ea o ka aina i kopono, right? Uamau ke ea o ka aina i kopono. A lot of people hear it as that's the state motto, quote unquote, well, it's the stolen motto is what it is, of our collective mana'o of Hawaii. And what that means is uamau, to perpetuate on and on into the foreseeable future and the unforeseeable future. Uamau. Ke ea. Ke ea. The life breath that's inside of each one of us, which is also the sovereignty within each of us. The sovereignty inside of each one of us and within us collectively. Wamao ke ea oka aina of the land ikopono kopono righteousness rightness correctness so you have these two great concepts ea the sovereignty within each person and within ourselves collectively yeah that implies the ability to choose the ability to say no the ability to do what must be done according to the instructions given to each one of us directly right and you have pono because to exercise air is it truly air if you're not being pono? It might be something else. So those two great concepts go hand in hand through exercising air, through practicing air, through being sovereign every day. And how using the discernment to also be pono and to remain in pono as we move that air forward as we grow that air as we remove the obstacles before us with our flow of air hey I'm sorry hey you guys sorry 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> just a little air moment there <laughs> but, but anyways, so as we move that forward, moving those two forward together, we are unbreakable. We are unbreakable. And the way that we need to keep that moving forward is to continually balance those forces, right? You have the force of air, you have the force of pono, and those two need to stay together. And sometimes it's not that easy to keep them together, but we have to do that. Um, how does this relate to body sovereignty? Well, because air, and fundamentally pono live within ourselves they are housed within us and because they are housed inside of us it is what we do physically in this world that manifests it individually and collectively so Our kino needs to be pono, and our kino needs to have the air to be pono. 
Now, that doesn't mean that um, I'm saying that, oh, this thing over here is Pono and that thing is unpono. And that's, that can get very tricky, right? Um, one of the issues that I've been involved with a lot lately has been the art of midwifery and its relationship to the state government, um, which is not a comfortable relationship at all. Now, no matter what culture you come from, probably that practice is probably one of the oldest practices that was ever done between people, right? Between people. So, you know, one person helping another person, that particular art has been around for a very, very, very long time. And it's also been persecuted for a very long time. Remember those Salem witch trials over there in the other place? Still going um, on. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, there is a question, has that really stopped? And why is there this need to shut that down? Well, the exercise of air is directly threatening to those who govern in such a way that is not Pono. So the moment you dissociate Pono from the air of the people, you know, you, you already can't. It's already, it's already wrong. So in that particular case where we're talking about, um, you know, in, in this particular case, it's the practice of having babies somewhere outside of the hospital, right? Somewhere not in the medical system, not where that birth is controlled by um, people with medical degrees who are going to plug in what they want to plug in and tell people to do sit, stand, lie down, how they want them to do it, etc., etc., right? And so, um, Ea is a very fundamental concept in that particular practice, right? Because you're talking about, um, you know, the ability for human beings to come into the world. And so when, when the forces of Ea represented by those standing for body sovereignty are up against many different forces, some of them being controlling forces and some of them simply being the forces of those obstacles that we have yet to overcome in human evolution. And by that, I mean that sometimes the, the person who appears to be on the other side of the conflict, I do a lot of peace kind of stuff too, so, you know, the, the, and, and I get into a lot of scraps also. <laughs> and so the, the person who appears to be on the other side of the conflict may or may not be actually oppressing you, or in some cases there may be elements of oppression from both sides, and in some cases, it is simply the manner in which the human spirit comes to a greater level of practice as a whole, you know? And if we look at it, hey, we're doing pretty good, man. <laughs> you know, we've, we've gotten in the last few decades, you know, we might have done a lot of backsliding on things like uh, pollution and, you know, GMOs, but we've also done a lot of good stuff in terms of conscious evolution, in terms of collective consensus, you know, like, no, you don't just go out and beat up gay people, hello, you know, things like that, and, and, uh, yeah, women and men should have the, um, should both have power, 
you know, basic stuff like that, that it's taken this long to figure out, but that consciousness is spreading and it's, it, you know, I think we've been doing pretty good as people. Um, now, this being Wahine Fest, I'm going to have to say that the manifestation of air, right, ha takes different forms. It can take Kane forms, it can take Wahine forms, it can take Mahu forms, it can take all kinds of different, it can take tree forms, you know, it can take all kinds of different things, right? And um, in that, sometimes we need to look at how Ea is manifested in the moving forward of all that we do, you know? and. Um, given that one large theme for manifesting Pono of late has certainly been the principle of Kue or resistance, right? Because without resisting the forces that are attempting to destroy permanently places, waters, cultures, people, then we're in a whole lot of trouble, right? So the manifestation of air does necessitate kue, resistance, right? And it also necessitates pono. So it has to be kue of a pono nature manifesting the air of the people, yeah? So, yeah, so, so, um, I guess this is my long way of basically saying that, um, you know, as we go forward and we really uh, do this, manifest our own personal kue, and our own personal air through that kue pono. And we recognize and we support one another in doing that. That is how we're moving the healing of our aina forward.
Aloha kia kua. Aloha. And I was 42 when I gave birth to my son. So it wasn't like I was a, a spring chicken there. And, uh, and it, you know, eight minutes you hemorrhage your dad, you know. So to, to, I owed it to my son to do it in a hospital, which I detested the idea of, but there was no other way that I could do that. So I gave the doctors this birthing plan from, from hell, from their perspective. It was like three pages, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. When I'm really tired after the birth, don't do this, don't, don't try to talk me into doing this and that and that and the other thing. So my doctor was actually kind of scared of me. He, he didn't talk. He just didn't say anything, which was great. And the, the, a couple of wahine were, had come to just be with me, you know, and it was a 26-hour labor, which is pretty astounding that they didn't insist. Now, Millicent, you really have to understand, we're going to have to do an episcopal, or whatever they want to do, and you don't even know what it is. And, and it's a metaphor for the, for the PTSD that all indigenous people have. When you're tired, you know, when you've been through an ordeal, you're in another state of consciousness. It's, it's, a, it's a very interesting state of consciousness. And it's right at that time when you are most vulnerable that you can either be taken advantage of. Like, for example, the doctor could say, look, we just got to do this or do that. And you're so tired that you say, okay, I give, you know, I give up. And that is what we have to remember in, in this global planetary uh, warfare that we're, we're, that we're acknowledging. Uh, this siege upon the water, this outright, you know, warfare on the planet, the chemtrails, every level of it. And, and just be at peace and know that when we, when we get tired, we've got each other's back. The stronger we are as one Kino, the more we'll have each other's back. So that when somebody gets tired and maybe is about to make a mistake, we can, like, I make a lot of mistakes, not just because I'm a Howley, <laughs> but because there's, there's a lot of reasons, actually. But, but I need support. I need to say, hey, Millicent, you know, did you know you really fucked up right there? I mean, that was, that was pretty bad. Or, Millicent, did you, you know, I mean, we all have, we're, we're human, we're making mistakes. So, instead of badgering each other about the mistakes we're making, and that you really need to do, are you bubbles off me more? Instead of uh, that perspective, we, we can so much more quickly go forward with more aloha and kapuloha and patience and if we really did say, you know, said something that was inappropriate or, because protocol is, is a wild thing and it's wild in every country and when I go to India there's a protocol there that is, you know, eight trips to India I've learned a lot about that, that those systems and you can make mistakes really easily 
but, and it's the same world. India and Hawaii are like this. The lay, the spiritual principles, Una. the the huna, the it's it's all one universal language. We're all human. So yeah, I'm sorry to be interjecting before I have the great pleasure of introducing someone that I am just learning about through the t contested case hearings. Talk about a rock of Gibraltar. Say what? Uh, yeah. uh, she took care of all of the petitioners, <laughs> just like a mother takes care of a bunch of kids, with that kind of love. Total, unconditional service. She was there every, every hearing, making sure the food was there, making sure the food was pono, making sure that the petitioners uh, and everyone involved was get, getting malama big time so that we could go the long haul. I would like to uh, bring to this stage Shandell Assumption. Well, the big question that we normally ask ourselves in the Hawaiian culture is, who are you? Okay, and that's where I want to pause. So when we're asked that question, who are you? What do you feel? What do you feel like? What do you respond as typically? Let me ask this gentleman here in the white shirt. Who are you? How would you normally answer that question? Would you give me your name or would you give me your occupation maybe? Yeah, you would normally just give me your name. How about the lady sitting next to him? How would you normally answer that question? My name is Yana. I'm taking care of the land. Okay, thank you very much. And then I'm going to ask one more right here in the Bible. How would you answer that question? My birth name is Cynthia. My Hawaiian name is Kayla Hilahi. Okay, thank you very much for, for looking at that question with me today. So part of what I'm going to ask you to do is to keep that question in front of you. Okay? So as we go through this discussion, just keep that question in front of you. Who am I? How do I reflect? There's a mirror here that says exactly the same thing. It says, make peace with your reflection. How interesting that that mirror is here today as we have this discussion. Okay? So keep that in front of you. Who are you? Who do you reflect as? Who do you represent? What hat do you wear? What is your role? This comes down to the basic question that uh, Kanaka asks themselves. What is your kuyana? What is your kuyana here? And what is your kuleana if you go to Oahu? Is that kuleana the same? Or is it different? And coming to the terms where we understand who we are and what our kuleana is, it really helps us as we move forward because then I'm not taking on too many tasks. Okay? I'm not trying to run over there and put out a fire that someone else really has kuleana for. And I'm not trying to step in front of someone else and say, I'm really good at this, let me do it. Because part of Kuyana is living your life. It's who you are. It's your God-given responsibility. It's what you were designed to do in this lifetime. And it is not necessarily an accumulation of your mistakes or of your successes and your accomplishments. So when I'm asked, who are you? I don't say, oh, I'm a PhD. I'm not, by the way. <laughs> but that's not how I would answer. Nor would I say, I'm a failure. You see? Those things don't define me. So, when people want to know who I am, I tell them that you must be with me. Because that's how you know who I am. From our interactions, from our exchanges, you will come to know who I am. Just as I will. I will learn to be me. Okay, in this lifetime. Now, most of us will go through life and we understand all of that. We just maybe understand that. But we do come to a point where we realize that society has impacted us, whether we like it or not. And we're having to stretch ourselves and we're having to do things that are uncomfortable. And that's what happened to me on my journey. I, I set out my course, I thought I knew who I was, I thought I knew what I wanted, and I set out my course, and I went for it. 
And what happened is I learned about life along the way. I learned about things that hurt me. There were truths. And I couldn't do anything with those truths. I was just kind of stuck with them. They were just things that I had to accept. Now, whether you're Hawaiian or not, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Right? On some fundamental level, we've all found ourselves in a position where we're facing conflict. What I found most interesting recently, in the last couple of years, is that we all, every single one of us, have some sort of cognitive dissonance. Some sort of conflict where our actions are not in alignment with our beliefs. Where we're making decisions that are not in line with our values. And we can beat up that guy for making a mistake. But the truth is, is that we're making those same mistakes. No fault of our own, okay? We are where we are. Historically, we can look at patterns and, and identify why we're here and the psychology that got us here. Okay? And that was, that's what makes it true for not just me, but for the person standing next to me, as well as the person standing in front of me. The opposition, they're affected by the same society and patterns that I am. So where's the perfection? Where's the ideal team? They're not out there. So if we keep kicking everybody to the curb, who are we going to be left with? Nobody. And I cannot run out and heal you and I cannot treat the next person and pick up the next person. And when we start movements like this, when we start moving together to do big things, traumatic things, what happens is exactly what Kalama talked about. We end up with a bunch of wounded warriors. We stepped onto that line wounded, and we stepped off wounded. And we're vulnerable in both situations, as she pointed out, to the guy who's just going to come by and buy us a drink at the end. <laughs> when we're our weakest. I call that the fox in the hen house. And uh, believe me, the fox is in the hen house every time. You just need to be able to find them or them. But every time, the fox is in the hen house. And what does that mean? That means if the person right next to you could be the one messing up your whole movement. Okay? So, what I want to say with that is not just be afraid. In fact, exactly the opposite of that. Because that's the message we're given every day. Right? This is a threat. That's a threat. Be afraid of this. Be afraid of that. What if this? What if that? Right? Everything is going to eat you up. Everything is going to beat you up. You're just going to lose. So just go over there, park, lie down, and die. Go. Be quiet about it, too, please. Don't cry. Watch TV. Right? Watch the TV. So we can program it. Which brings me right to where I want to be. Program. Okay? So we all know about computers today. We're pretty good about that, right? If I put a computer right here, I would that part. what would it do? Your plan. No, by itself, what would it do? Take up energy. Absolutely nothing. What's my point here? Don't give it any power. Don't give it any power. God, she took me all the way to the end of my talk. <laughs> that's it right there. <clears throat> Remember, that's the conclusion, okay? You're going to just ignore it. You're going to just ignore it. Don't give it any power. <coughs> but we're going to talk about that power for a moment, okay? Because this computer does have power, right? If what? If I give it to it. Yeah? If I program this computer, it can do something. Right? I can make this computer do something. Yeah? Well, in your life, you're the computer. Who's programming you? Who's making decisions in your house? I want you to physically raise your hand if you make the decisions in your home. 
I can see everybody's hands right now. Why don't I? <laughs> Literally, every single one of us should have been able to say that without hesitation. I make the decisions in my house. Because if you yielded your decision to any other human being, you are now powerless. Okay? So, for me, it's you make the decisions, okay? You're in power. You have all the control of your life, of your program, of your computer, of your output, right? You're now in control. You make the powers. What does that mean? What does that mean? Tell you that was called? Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. What are you guys getting there? So, Laulani talked about birth. Let's take birth of another step. Okay? You're in the hospital. You give birth. Some stranger walks into your room and says, let's register your child. Ooh, you're let's going fill dead? out the name on the birth certificate. I like this okay? story. <laughs> you do it, right? Why not? Wow. What did you just do? Anybody know? Other than you registering. contracted with the federal corporation. What did you say? You gave your baby away. That's yep. right. You That's gave it. that child away. We talk about adoption more than we talk about birth. You sold your child, not sold, you gave your child to the state of Hawaii as a ward of the state. Yes, ma'am. But you kept all the liability. You take care of that child. They take all the profits. The resource, the child, now belongs to them. Did you know you did that? No full disclosure. I got one yes, the rest no. Yes and no. Yes and no. So your child is now a citizen of a state. They are a ward of a state. They are responsible for the laws of that state. You got that child? You think they know those laws yet? They are responsible for them. Ignorance? doesn't save you. Okay? So I don't care how old you are, if you don't know it's time. This child has an excuse. We don't. So as a ward of the state, are you any better than a slave? No. No, you're not. Did you know you were a slave? One yes. I'm not. Some no, some not me. Yeah. We're all at a little bit different place here. But those questions are big questions for us because they determine what our next steps are. They determine how we solve our problems going forward. They determine what we can do and what we cannot do. There are spaces, what I have room for, what I have the capacity for. Yeah? So it's important for us to understand that. So as a, as a citizen of the state, they tell me that I should pay taxes so that we can add all this structure and that we can be progressive. I love that you're following me like that. <laughs> so we can make war. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we can make war. Right in line with the fear they want us to own, right? Yeah. So when you don't pay your taxes, they call you up and they hassle you and they threaten you. But what they don't tell you is it was voluntary. Right. Unless we're in a state of war. That's an exception. Okay? So, have we ever not been in war? No. No. That's why. Right. But again, <laughs> citizenship is voluntary. <laughs> In other words, I can stop being a citizen right now. Congratulations. Agreeing to their laws is voluntary. Yep. And it always has been. You have to agree, participate, and consent in order for that to be your law. And if you did not, then it ain't yours. Ooh. 
So go back to the decision maker, because they're still in the room. Yeah? The decision maker over time will learn that a lot of people want what you have. Yeah? A lot of people want what you have. And we can see that as greed, or we can see that as a need for power. Regardless of what you see it as, you should know that. That two types of people will approach you in your life. The one who wants to be with you, and the one who wants something from you. Most of them are going to be the latter. Because we all know, we have very few people standing next to us in our lives. Okay? But are you able to discern those people that come forward in your lives? Do you know when you meet someone, is this person toxic? Is this person straight up? Is this person honest? Put your hands together for Kyoka Hashiya. Mahalo! <laughs> Aloha! Aloha. <laughs> I, uh, I'm Kiyoka Hachiya. I came from Shiga, Japan. And I'm, I'm, I'm not a fluent speaker uh, of English, so I 
wrote it down everything I have to say, I want to say. And uh, the place Shiga has the biggest lake in the middle of the Japan. So you can easily find in the map. And it's like the neighbor of Japan body. And I thank Millicent and where is she? Ah, yeah. <laughs> and everyone to let me sing here. And Millicent and I met in Kawaii in 2011. We had a concert there and uh, uh, sang on the radio show there. Yes. And the next song is uh, Moonlight of My Skin. About 20 years ago, I saw a Japanese movie, Gaia Symphony, directed by Jin Tatsumura. And it's a documentary movie about several people who has done something amazing for the Gaia the Mother Earth. And one of them, uh, one of the story was about Naina Thompson and the Hokurea. Before I saw the movie, my image of Hawaii was just uh, resort hotels, golf courses, expensive shopping, and uh, the place where only rich people would enjoy. And I had no interest in at all. However, watching the movie, I was very moved to uh, know that Hawaiian people are reclaiming their own culture. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Millicent. <laughs> Not only Hokurea, I was so moved by the powerful dance of Kahiko and the powerful voice of chanting. And I love the way Hawaiian people uh, feel the spirits in nature, such as rocks and trees and creatures. And that is the same as we Japanese do, too. And uh, this is the song which I came... Hmm? Sorry. This is the song which came to me on a full moon day with the image of Hokurea. Thank you. Ah, no, just going to the back. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, the title is uh, Moonlight on My Skin. And uh, having moonlight on my skin, all the, uh, on the full moon night, all the cells in my body remember how it was in my past life and I feel strong connection to Hawaii Island and uh, this is a song about Sada 
間に浴びて心潤い体も満ちる一つ一つの細胞たちが命を吹き返して打ち寄せる波のように私に語りかける Thank you. <laughs> My light on my skin. Did you help me? <laughs> Thank you. Hello. As I said, I was very moved to know that Hawaiian people are reclaiming their own culture, and、um, in Japan. The government is doing what they like, such as nuclear power plants and money, money, money. But、uh, we also have the same kind of movement now. The hidden words are coming to reveal, and some people are searching for the truth. Many more people, including young people, start to visit shrines. To get the holy energy from the nature in the shrines more than before, and showing respect to the sacred places, we are waking up. The next song, Awa no Uta, thank you. <laughs> the next song, Awa no Uta,、uh, the lyrics are ancient words. In Japan, we believe in Kotodama. Uh, the sound itself of the words have power in it. I put the music to these ancient words. That is Awa no Uta. And the following song is about the goddess of the sun, Amaterasu. When I visited Ise Shrine and had a formal ceremony for the sacred,、uh, no, no, no,、uh, had formal ceremony for the second time. This song came down to me. We respect Amaterasu, the goddess of the sun. She is also the goddess of rice fields. So, Aina. <laughs> Awa no Uta and Amaterasu Kamiyo, I'm going to sing.
あなたらす神よその名のもとに天に砕いちてらしたまえ導きたまえ神ながら玉ちち生えませたまえ神ながら玉ちち生えませたまえ Thank you, Ama no Uta and Amateras Camilo. Live on earth. 
Stars and millions while they're starving children and teachers work for many are responsible for our future generations. Whose education is cat and box like the cubicle stall that's training you all for? And who cares who's president? As long as it's good for business, when do we get so pro profit? We are so pro profit. Oh, I, oh, I, I can be free. Rising up out of the darkness, pulling away the veil of madness. Shake it off, shake it off, the fetters of night to see what's on the inside. We are children of the light, children of the light, children of the light. We are children of the light, children of the light, children of the light. So you see, it's crazy. To go on believing that we live in a world where we are equally treated the same bosses who make up the law to cash in and break at any time they want. Just go a standing rock up in North Dakota, they got landslides in this age on standoff. The protectors go to pray, they pray, they pray, pipeline. Don't come this way, please don't come this way. Yeah. Oh, 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 they pray, they pray. Pipeline, please don't come this way, please don't come this way. And people who want the pipeline set their dogs after the protectors. On on boys and men, women and children, and the people who want the pipeline set their fire hoses to spray, and all the protectors, fully clothed and soaked in freezing temperatures, and the people who want the pipeline. Set their crop dusters to dusting, and they flew their planes and sprayed 
Well, only God knows what they sprayed on those who came to pray. Protect the water, protect the land, protect the human beings who do not understand. Protect the water, protect the land, protect the human beings who do not understand. And we are children of the light, children of the light, children of the light. We are children of the light. We live in a world where we are equally treated the same bosses who make up the law to cash in and break it any time they want. Those bosses are frauds. It's time we quit all our jobs. Let's work for ourselves. We can do what we want. Do what we want. is led by high dimensional beings who feed on positivity organic community action shout out to the connected masses to get involved become a part of the millions and billions hopefully Power out of money, start living our own self sovereignty. Sing, we, oh, we, we are free. Cause we are children of the light, children of the light, children of the light. We all are recalibrating, retuning to be able to meet people that we would not have met 
Like for example, the Mauna has taught me so, so much, Mauna Bahia, and has brought me to, together to, with these people that are just blow my mind. And it's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this particular group of people together. Because they are teaching me so, so much. And if we all just looked at each other without knowing each other, it doesn't matter if we know each other or not. We are all truly in this together as we know. So this song is dedicated to the Kia'i. Thank you. 
God is in control. Oh. <laughs> oh, let's have a peace song, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> On the stage with us is the beautiful Lalita, ladies and gentlemen.
I'm just making this up because I never finished the song. I don't know how to end it. Shine
traditional chorus. So come on up, guys, for now, too. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mike Mahalo Wahine Festival 2017. Mahalo Mahalo Lalita, Tiana, Mike Aloha, Seth, and Jerome, who's doing double duty here, and Alan. It's so beautiful to be by this awesome Vai. And it's a reminder of all the sacred waters that we all fight for and we all protect and that we all do, that run through all of us and connect us to the Aina, to each other. And mahalo. for all that we do for that Vi and all that Vi does for us.
Sister Rose and a very old old friend. Uh, you know, love Lani. So what? What's that? Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite songs, Laulani's going to sing. She's a songwriter also. Used to have to bend down real low and listen to her. But now she's up so front, you know, right on the mic. And she's going to sing a song that um, she wrote when she left Hawaii. And uh, it's about her place on the wind on Oahu. Hold their hand there the whole time. <laughs> you see your hand right there, it stops. Freeway. 
in some dirty deep stealing water, don't even bother to follow their own rules. Those silly fools, but I got a lot of faith in the cake of today. We're gonna stick together, whatever comes our way. Giving us, give us back the aina and the water and the eat our Um, you know, to Liko, 